Lesson 1. The 2012 Legislative Change. During this lesson, we'll run through how to run a transfer forward to create the 2012 returns. I'll explain how the capital gains changes have impacted the pages within the programme. We'll run through the property page changes, specifically regarding the offsetting of losses from furnished holiday lettings. We'll look at corporation tax amended returns with a repayment claim. And I'll show you how the CT income expenses and deductions IXP Routag options have been significantly expanded following customer feedback. Once you have installed and registered the 2012 version of the PTP tax platform, the first task is of course to do your transfer forward. You do that by selecting the transfer forward button in the main program toolbar. Once selected, if you read through the messages and click through, select to transfer, read the notes regarding tax databases and then continue through, select the products you wish to transfer forward and click the transfer button. This will run through and automatically create the 2012 tax returns for all of the clients for whom you had a 2011 return. Once it's finished running through and creating those returns, it will deal with any dividend recalculations, do all the necessary updates to the databases, and then it will tell you that it's complete and you're ready to start progressing with the 2012 return completion. For the 2012 return, there have been a couple of changes regarding capital gains. By viewer return, you can see that for question 7 on page 2, there's a new checkbox regarding computations. And this is how you would show HMRC that you've provided the capital gains tax computations. In PTP, this box will be checked automatically if your computations have been filled in within the CGT pages, if there's an entry in the CGT additional information box, or when filing online, if capital gains tax attachments have been made, which is a new option I'll show you in just a moment. Please note though, the box will never be ticked on screen. It will only be ticked in the printed form and when the file is prepared for FBI. This is because until that time, we don't know whether you will actually attach those pages to the return that you're submitting. So if I view the capital gains tax pages now and access the details, you can see that I've actually got an entry for a capital gain made from BT shares. So if I go to actually print the return now, and run a print preview, you'll be able to see that that checkbox on page two is completed for us. So if I preview the return, here on screen, the return is displayed. If I scroll through to page two, you can see that the computations provided checkbox is ticked automatically. There is also a new box within the capital gains pages. If I go back in to view those pages, you can see that box 15, deferred gains from before 23rd of June 2010, qualifying for entrepreneur's relief. And to make entries in this new box, you access the backing schedule, indicated by the fan page icon, and make the entry directly into the box D within the backing schedule. And that will then appear automatically in box 15 of the capital gains pages. Now I mentioned earlier a new option available when filing online to attach CGT computations. So if I close down the return now and go directly to the online filing option by the FBI button in the main program toolbar, if I select the return to file you can see a new button for adding CGT attachments that are created outside of the program, for example a stockbroker's report. And if you use that to add those CGT computations, it again will automatically 
select and tick the checkbox on page 2 of the return. The next change I'd like to show you regards the property pages. There is a significant change to these in the 2012 return because HMRC have changed the rules with regard to the reporting of income and the treatment of losses. The income from furnished holiday letting properties must be split into that derived from the UK and that derived from EEA or European Economic Area. Any loss arising from furnished holiday lettings can now only be offset against the same category furnished holiday lettings. This means losses brought forward have to be split between the source type and in cases where clients have income from both UK and EEA furnished holiday lets they have to have two sets of property pages. Other property losses from page 2 can be offset against UK furnished holiday lettings income but not EEA furnished holiday lettings income. So let's take a look at an example. If I view the 2011 return for a client with property income and we view the property pages we can see here that I've got furnished holiday letting losses of £4,000 which I've chosen to offset against other property income. If I click the fanned page icon to access the backing schedule we can see that that's made up from a UK furnished holiday letting and an EEA furnished holiday letting. If we access page 2 we can see that I also have a property loss from my other property income, the total of which results in a loss to carry forward of £6,000. So if I now click in to view the 2012 return and again access the UK property pages, there's an eye icon to show that we need to have a look here because there's information transferred forward from the prior year choose to view those property pages and I'm displayed a warning. This is to let us know that where the property losses have been brought forward automatically into box 38A on page UK property 2, it may be necessary to manually address these and we know that that's true in this example because we've got losses from UK, EEA and other property income. You can disable this warning on a client by client basis. Now if I try to directly access page 2, the system will warn me that I can't do that because I haven't yet confirmed whether my furnished holiday lettings are from the UK or EEA. If I access the backing schedule for those furnished holiday lettings and view each page in turn, there's a new selection box where I need to choose whether the property is in the UK or EEA. So this property is in Devon, so I'm going to select UK and close that. Second furnished holiday let is in Mallorca, so that's EEA, so I'm going to select that. And you'll notice that that now pop brings up a new button because I have a separate set of furnished holiday let pages for UK and EEA properties. And when I click that button, it switches between the two. If I then go to access page 2, step through the warning messages there, you can see that I've got my £6,000 worth of losses brought forward. Now I know that that 2000 of that comes from other property income, so I can type my 2000 in there and I can choose to use that against profits this year. I will of course need to access my backing schedule to create some profits this year. So that's my loss from other property income being used against my other property income. If I go back to page one now, my UK property losses were 3,000, so I need to type those in there and my EEA losses were 1,000. 
so I need to type that in my EEA box. So as you can see, the significant change to the way that property losses are handled in the 2012 return has been made very simple for you through the use of PTP. The next couple of changes I want to show you relate to the CT600. The first regards a new warning message that we've included within the program. This relates to scenarios where you're filing an amended return and a repayment is due. This is because there is a fault on the HMRC system that means that if you produce an amended CT600 and the repayment claim has been completed, HMRC will not be able to use the repayment claim details entered on the amended return, but instead will use the details entered on the original submission. As a result, if you are submitting an amended return and the repayment details differ on that to the original return, you will need to submit a, an attached PDF document detailing the correct repayment claim details. The final legislative change I'd like to show you relates to the profit adjustment computation and the IXBRL tags that are available to select. These have been significantly expanded to include new entries following customer feedback. So now, if I select the ellipse button to choose which IXBRL tag I wish to use, you can see a much greater list of tags that are available for you. So you can be much more specific when tagging your profit adjustment computation.